A pilot needs to become familiar with aerodynamic phenomenon that may not seem intuitive at first. One of these is the left turning tendencies produced by a single engine propeller driven airplane. Now a lot of times people refer to left turning tendencies simply as torque and although it is true that torque is one of the elements that does produce left turning tendencies there are three others as well. Those include spiraling slipstream, asymmetrical loading also known as p-factor or propeller disc asymmetrical loading if you want to sound smart. And the final one is gyroscopic precession. Let's first look at torque closer. Here we have an image of a biplane from the front and the propeller is spinning in this direction. Because Newton's third law says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, the rest of the airplane wants to spin in the opposite direction this way creating a left roll and that left roll can result in a left turn. Because torque occurs any time that the airplane isn't on the ground uh, where the ground can resist that left turning tendency we find that torque is acting on the airplane through all phases of flight. Next we'll look at the spiraling slipstream. We're looking at an airplane here from behind and slightly to the left and what most people would imagine is that the slipstream comes along the airplane like this. However, because of the rotation of the propeller, it adds a spin to that slipstream and makes it come around the fuselage, striking the top of the vertical stabilizer. This creates a yawing motion around the vertical axis, creating a left turn. Also, kind of interesting, because it strikes the top of the vertical stabilizer, it also tends to produce a little bit of a right turn. But it's almost negligible and most people forget about it and they're fine doing just that. Spiraling slipstream is most likely to be encountered just during takeoff while powering up while the airplane isn't moving very quickly. And it's usually the first reason why the airplane will begin turning to the left and wanting to go off the runway. Asymmetrical loading is probably one of the harder left turning tendencies to fully understand. And it's a little bit hard to demonstrate so I'll do the best I can. Here we're looking at the side of a propeller cone. This is a propeller that is on our side and it is the propeller that's moving in the upward direction. Down below we have the same cone, but we're looking at the propeller on the opposite side traveling in the downward direction. Looking at these propellers, we can define different portions of the airfoil. We have the upper camber, the lower camber, and the cord line. Down below we have the upper camber, the lower camber and the cord line. If we have a relative wind and a flight path, we can find our angle of attack, which in this case is right here on this propeller and right here on this propeller. This is about the same angle, so both of these propellers are producing the same amount of thrust. If we increase the airplane's angle of attack to the relative wind, we can do the same thing again. Drawing the cord line on both of the propellers. We'll see that the propeller traveling upward has a much smaller angle of attack compared to the propeller traveling downward. Because that propeller traveling downward is on the right side, it produces more lift than the one on the left side creating a left turning tendency. Asymmetrical loading is the most prevalent left turning tendency that student pilots have trouble with. It is going to be encountered during rotation, it's going to be encountered during any climb, 
and also during slow flight. And finally we have gyroscopic precession. Here we have a gyroscope which is spinning on a gimbal. Let's say that gyroscope is spinning in this direction. Say if we were to apply a force to any portion of this gyroscope, like right here. That applied force will get translated in the direction of the turn 90 degrees and that force will get expressed right here. So to show that 90 degree angle, it is right here. And this is true anywhere that you apply a force to it. Now, as pilots, we need to care about this because right in front of us we have a big old gyroscope that is our propeller. And gyroscopic precession is most likely to get encountered when we're flying a tailwheel airplane and we're just taking off. Here we have a biplane that is beginning its ground roll to take off. And slowly it raises its tail as the tail is able to fly. So the tail comes up and the force is applied to our spinning gyroscope right here in this direction. That force gets translated in the direction of the turning gyroscope and is applied right here producing a left turn. And when you fly a tailwheel for the first time and you're taking off, I think you'll be pretty surprised about how strong this left turning tendency is. It's a good reason why a lot of people lose directional control while taking off and end up off the side of the runway. In most other situations, this left turning tendency of gyroscopic precession doesn't occur too much. All right, just to recap really quickly, we have torque, spiraling slipstream, asymmetrical loading, and precession all creating left turning tendencies. And this is true for most airplanes that have been built in the West. However, Russian engineers have been known to like to make the propeller spin in the opposite direction. So if you find yourself in Siberia being chased by Russian troops for, I don't know, you tell me why, and I guess it's still the Cold War, and your only means of escape is to jump into an airplane and fly it off the side of a cliff, expect right turning tendencies.